Hello everyone, welcome back. Today I want to take a step back and talk about quantization in large language models. If you've ever wondered how these massive AI models can run on your local machine without needing a supercomputer, this is for you. If you've ever wondered how to pick which model for your local machine, this is for you. Now I do get a little bit technical in places, but ultimately the goal is to break down what terms like Q2, Q3, Q4, Q4 underscore K underscore M, Q4 underscore K underscore S, and like things like Q, Q5 underscore K underscore L. So let's jump right into it. All right, so where I wanna start here is really um, quantization is the process of reducing the precision of a model's weight to make it smaller and faster. Think of it like compressing a high resolution image into a smaller file size. In AI models, weights are typically stored as FP16, so 16 bit floating point numbers during training, which are very precise, but also very large. Quantization converts those weights into lower precision formats like four bit or Q4 or even two bit Q2. Thus, it reduces the model's size and speeds up inference, making it possible to run these models on our hardware that we have at home. So this, this diagram here shows you what a 32-bit floating point number is made up with. So you've got one bit for the sign, you've got eight bits for the exponent, and you've got the rest for the mantissa. And then if you look at the four bit, uh, it's very basic. It's literally 15 different options there. So I wanna show you what the 16-bit looks like. So this is what models typically have. So you typically have one bit for the sign, five bits for the exponent, 10 bits for the mantissa, and then a four-bit floating point could be, there typically are, one bit for the sign, one bit for the exponent, and two bits for the mantissa. So you can see like just the sheer size difference that's occurring there, just going from a 16-bit to a, um, a four-bit. Now, uh, I do want to talk a little bit about this diagram here. So in, at the highest level, you can think about the original model size just being big, 16 gigabytes, for example. And then you can think about each time that you would see a Q value, Q2, it being some percentage of that overall size of the, the full FP16. Now, these estimates are approximate. Each models are different, and I typically don't see the scaling that... Um, I don't see like the same scaling consistently in the models that I test. I'm sure someone could tell you like a formula or something to calculate that pop, uh, more reasonably. But in this example, you take a 16 gigabyte model and maybe you do a Q4 compression on it and it ends up about 25% of the original size. Realistically, it's probably going to be larger than that. It's probably going to be 35% of the original size or something like that. But you kind of get the point that we're bringing it down to that level. So this is a chart um, that you'll often see terms like Q2, Q3, Q4, Q5, and the Q just stands for quantization. And the number 2, 3, 4, 5 tells you how many bits are used to represent each weight. For example, Q2 means two-bit quantization, which allows only four possible values per weight. Q3 means three-bit, meaning eight possible values. Q4 means 4-bit, meaning 16 possible values. Lower numbers like Q2 result in a lot smaller files and a lot faster inference, but it can significantly reduce accuracy. Higher numbers like Q5 or Q8 preserve more accuracy, but they take up more space. So it's all about finding that right balance for what you have, what your hardware that you have, and your use case, really. Uh, another way to think about that is in this diagram, it's a bar uh, chart that I put together, I'm, and I'm not perfect at diagramming, but you sort of get the idea how there's the trade-off of size versus accuracy. Again, all of this is very, um, it's just, it's representative, it's not perfect. You know, the, the relative accuracy is going to change, and it's not going to follow that line directly. But the point is, is as you go down in size, you're sacrificing the relative accuracy. And it's just so important for you to kind of like keep that in mind as we, um, as we go forward here. 
So, one thing that I want to kind of talk about is suffix, suffixes like K underscore M, K underscore L, and K underscore S. These refer to the granularity of the quantization. It's just like a, it's not just the bits, it's like the granularity of it. And it's basically the K stands for K means. If any of you have done data science, you can, that term should be very familiar to you. It's a method that groups similar weights together and assigns them a representative value. The letters M, L, and S tell you the size of these groups. For example, K underscore S would mean smaller groups. That means the most aggressive, but would lose some accuracy. K underscore M is medium groups. It's basically a balance between size and accuracy. And K underscore L means large groups, which provide more accuracy, but it also means you're giving up or you're gonna have a larger file size. So this is also another thing that you're going to want to look into, depending on your hardware. For me personally, running it locally, K underscore M is perfect. That's the one I typically go with. If that is an option, that is there for me. But if you see K underscore S, K underscore L, K underscore M, you now should understand that what that means is that is another level of basically compression that's sort of happening. And it's really not compression. It's really like grouping that's happening that will lower the file size. And another way to look at that here, um, it's probably a little bit easier than the other diagram I was showing it, uh, is you can see here on the top diagram, you've got K underscore S with the four clusters. You've got K underscore M with the eight clusters and K underscore L with the 16 clusters. And again, if you've done um, any sort of K-mean stuff in data science, it's gonna make a lot of sense to you. It's a very common uh, practice there. All right, so here, this is, I really like this chart, but quantization is all about trade-offs. Let's visualize this in this triangle that I have here. One side, you have file size. The other side, you have accuracy. And the third side, you have inference speed. When you quantize a model, you're essentially choosing which of these factors to prioritize. For example, Q2 gives you the smallest file size and the fastest speed but it sacrifices a lot of accuracy. Q4 underscore K underscore M is a good balance between size, speed, and accuracy. Q5 underscore K underscore L preserves more accuracy, but takes up more space and runs slightly slower. So understanding these trade-offs is really key for you to choose the right quantization level for your use case. So I have put together this new model, 5.4, which came out. It's been out a while, like unofficially, but now they're the official version. I downloaded the version from Unsloth, and you can see the size difference here. So this will give you a good idea. So the 32, or um, sorry, the 16, the F16 version is 29.32 gigabytes. The Q8 version is almost half of that. So notice how it went from the 16 to the eight and it's about half. Now this is where it starts getting interesting. You see the Q6 at 12. You see Q5 underscore K underscore M at 10. And then you see the medium one here, uh, Q4 underscore K underscore M at 8.89. That is the one I'm personally using right now. You can see I downloaded that one. So that one works like really well for my use case. And it goes all the way down to so the smallest model you can get is that 5.61 gigabyte one, which is the Q2 underscore K. The one that's slightly bigger than that is a Q2K underscore L. So you can see how that secondary uh, grouping, the K means clustering that's happening there, actually did increase the size of that slightly. Uh, not drastically, but noticeable. And the bigger the model, you're gonna notice that even more. I typically do not have a lot of luck with Q2 models unless they're like really big and I just wanna be able to run them. Uh, because a lot of times I'm running models that are under 27 billion parameters or so locally. Now, I wanted to maybe wrap this up with sort of a, this is not the greatest flow diagram, but it kind of gives you an idea of like the things you have to think of. First off, you have to think about your available RAM. So if you have like greater than eight gigabytes that you're working with, 
you might actually be looking at some of the bigger ones, depending on the, how big the model is. You might actually want to go to like a Q5 or a Q8, or um, maybe you even want to run the full precision FP16 model. If you have less than that, you're probably going to start looking at smaller Q4 to Q5. And then is the accuracy a priority when you start getting smaller? Then you're probably going to want to start going like uh, the, the if you got a really small tight amount of memory and you're running a really tiny model, do you have to think about like is size more important, is speed more important, or is it um, the quality of it better? And you, you can decide between K4 or K3 and then the small clustering or the, the medium sized clustering. So you can kind of think about that like there's so many more things to it than this, but you can see sort of the idea of like the thought process you can kind of go through um, when you're thinking about the model use. For me personally, uh, it's a lot of trial and error. What I do is I typically think about it from the standpoint of like, first off, does it fit in my memory? How fast does it need to be? Like, am I trying to get it uh, to perform at a certain speed because I'm trying to do something? Can it run fully on my GPU or do I need to run GPU and CPU at the same time? And is it going to be something that I need to run uh, over a long period of time? Does it need to be ran on like battery power? Can I run it on my desktop? So for example, I run some models on my MacBook. My MacBook may be on battery power. So I'm gonna be looking for smaller models, faster models there that give me what I need, but aren't gonna kill, like, kill my battery. Anyway, I just want to say like, this is, um, this is something that I was very confusing to me because of just all the, you know, you get into this, you get into this world and there's a lot of acronyms and things that people are familiar with, or they're already familiar with, but a lot of people just getting into it just aren't. And there's not a lot of good resources out there to really explain all this. So I wanted to put together this video to kind of talk through it and I hope it helped. Let me know. Um, if this was helpful and if there's other topics you'd like me to cover to really explain. And just remember, it's now you can look at these and you'll understand what the Q values mean, what the K underscore M, the K underscore L, and the K underscore S actually mean. So I appreciate you all. Leave any questions and comments below. I appreciate you all. And until next time, peace out.